Hi and welcome back on a rainy afternoon. Uh, today we're going to have a look at the Microvax 3400 which was a small office type machine um, rated at 2.4 VUPS. It uh, had three, three hard drives in it and a tape drive generally. There was a smaller version called the 3300 which was in a narrower case. This one hasn't been powered on for a couple of years, so before I turn it on, I'm going to take it apart and blow the spiders out of it, and hopefully it will function. All the controls are hidden behind this door, so we'll slide that down and see what we've got. TK70 tape drive in here. Uh, the controls for three hard drives. These are plugs, which tell you what the ID of the hard drive is, so that will set the, the device number. And we've got a ready light um, and ready button so that you can take the drive offline with that and a right protect. Down here we've got a halt button and a run button. Power switch here and this is the latch to remove the front cover. Uh, let's take the cover off and have a look. We pull this out and just lift the cover off. Up the top we have the drive cage. Hard drives are in here, you can probably see some of them. These are what they call DSSI hard drives. Uh, Digital Small Systems Interconnect I think it stands for. Um, they're not SCSI, they're not IDE, they're DSSI. They're a special type of drive. Each drive has got its own controller on it and is independent of the machine. So you can hook in other machines in a cluster and they can talk to these disks just as, as if they were connected, connected locally. So it's like a shared storage system. Um, this is a terminator for the DSSI bus. You can use a special cable here to connect to expansion boxes or other machines. Looking further down we can see power supplies here and here and then we have all the bus slots. This is what they call Q-Bus, which is a system that they introduced in some of the, some of the older machines, like Microvaxes, Microvax 2s, that sort of thing. Um, this one is a straight through Q-Bus, so, so all the slots are just wide, straight across. Uh, machines like the Microvax 2 follow what they call a serpentine pattern where you've got to use um, grant cards to um, to get this serpentine pattern, but the 33, 3400, they're, they're just straight through. Um, in this machine we've got a SCSI card, which I don't think functions. Uh, this is the tape controller. Uh, behind this one's a memory board, and this is the main control panel, and there's a memory board behind there as well. Um, this switches to an enable halt so that you can hit the halt key and it stops. Um, this will set the run state and that's an indicator to say what's going on. Console port and thin wire or thick wire ethernet. I've got terminators in there at the moment and there's a switch to switch between them. These have all got captive screws in them so to take the boards out you just push and turn and The module will then come out. So this is the main control module. So you'll have a connection through to the to the CPU card, which is this one here, and it connects to the memory cards through a special cable. The board rate is set with a, a thumb wheel at the top here, and there's an indicator on there. Uh, this is the connection for the Ethernet. Anyway, we shall take that out. So that's that removed. And we shall disconnect our memory as well. And they have handy little um, grab tags on these cables so that you can get them out easily. All the cards have levers that you um, pull out and then the card will, will come out like that. It's 
So this is the main CPU board with the Microfax 3400. A little bit of onboard memory here, just like some of the other machines. Next thing we do is take the memory boards out. So undo the memory interconnect. Get that out. And we can remove the memory boards. It's a 16 megabyte board. So this is a um, what they call a grant card. Just extends the the bus onto the next slot. And this is the tape controller. And it's sitting on a little spacer because it's only a half height card. So if we pull that out undo the cable there. This board should come out. So that's the tape controller. The next is the SCSI controller. It's got some terminators on there. Um, standard uh, Centronics type interface. And that's our SCSI controller. And the last one is basically um, a termination, bus termination. You can see all the resist well you may be able to see all the resistors in there. Okay, I've just blown all the dust out. Um, this is where the power goes in down here. And there's some fans um, and then the power feeds up into these power supplies. I'm not going to pull the power supplies out today. They, they're fairly well protected. And I've, I've blown sort of dust sort of through there anyway. Uh, the power cord on this is one of these um, IECs with a notch in it. So you've got to make sure you have the right sort of cord. And we'll just plug this in and just see if it fires up without the boards in. Looks like the hard drives are happy. As I said before, the, the hard drives are independent. They don't care about the CPU being there. Okay, I'll put some of the cards back in. These memory boards look to be the same size. I think they're both 16 meg. They've got the same part number on them, even though they, they look a little bit different. So, yep. None of these sort of small dims, that's a large board for memory. And as I mentioned before, this is the memory interconnect that connects all the memory boards in the CPU. This ribbon cable out the side is the um, DSSI connector that goes to the hard drives. And then this is the memory connector that goes into this, um, into this memory interconnect. Yeah, I'm just putting the plates back on now. These are for RF shielding. Now, before I put the system module in, I want to have a look at that and uh, pull the battery out of it because these batteries tend to leak and the batteries in here. So this is the module removed. Batteries velcroed on there. So I'll pull that out. 
there's a little bit of um, corrosion just around there but it looks like it'll scrape off okay. Okay, clean this up. Now it's time to go back in. That will plug into that connector and then on from there. Now before we test it, I'll just take the this um, cover plate off and show you the hard drives. All right, once the screws are out, I'll just lift it out and it'll come away. As I mentioned before, this is the control panel for the discs with the ID and the status and the online ready and all that sort of stuff. Um, the hard drives are mounted in here. There's one large full height one there, there's some half height ones in there as well. Next step is to undo those two and pull the next plate out. Just undone those and this will now fold out. Showing the hard drives. Got three hard drives in here. I'm not sure what size they are. I'll find out when I start it up. All of them are mounted on these rubber mounts. There's screws there and the whole thing you can see that drive moving. It's just moving on the rubber mounts. This is the same cable that came up from the CPU module. So it goes into there and then the discs are daisy chained on this bus and then it comes out to this expansion port here. So this is the DSSI bus. Okay, let's turn it on. Looks like I've pushed the halt button in by mistake. That's fine. You can tell this is an enterprise machine when you can write protect um, discs and take them offline. That's something you do in a workstation. Okay, I've taken the battery out, so it's going to ask me for a language every time now. Showing the boot devices. And I had halt turned off on the console, so I'm just going to fix that so I can get back to the prompt. And just check how much memory I've got in this. Okay, 36 meg, so we have 4 meg on board and two 16 meg memory boards. If I look at the devices. I've got three DSSI discs. Tape controller and Ethernet. The three discs are an RF31, which is 380 megabytes. RF71, which is the full height drive, so that's an older one, which is 400 meg. And the RF35, which is a newer style drive, which is 825 meg. Um, you can get an RF36 of this as well, which is 1.6 gig, which is huge for one of these, for this sort of machine. Let's connect to one of the discs. Press set, host, slash dup, slash d, ssi, and ID number. So this is the controller on the actual disc that's responded here. And you can do all sorts of things there as you can see. Um, usually what you do is do things like params. And I've forgotten how to use it.
you can get all sorts of just statistics out of these drives. Time to see if there's anything on the drives. Seems to be very slow for some reason. We shall come back to it. Trying another drive now. Seems to be working better. Unit zero might have a problem. Problems there as well. And nothing on that disc. So it looks like I might have a disc problem that I'm going to have to investigate. Just doing a drive test on the on the first disc. Just see what happens. Okay, the disc test passed. Um, I'm a bit suspicious about the SCSI card in this machine because I knew it was faulty, but it may be it may be stopping VMS from booting. So the next thing to do is to pull it out and see what happens. Okay, I've now pulled the SCSI card out, so we'll see if it's improved. Well, it looks like that was the problem. Uh, the SCSI card was stopping VMS from booting. You know, as part of the boot, it probes hardware, and when it got to the SCSI card, it was obviously hanging on that and wouldn't proceed. I knew there was an issue with the SCSI card, but I just assumed that it wasn't reading devices, but it looks like it causes problems when it's plugged in. The, it's not really an issue because the disks aren't SCSI, they're DSSI. Um, it just means I can't plug external tape drives and CD-ROMs and things like that in. Right, so everything's in order. Let's see the discs. Stuff on the backup drive. Looks like an old Windows 98 backup from many years ago. 2000. I've had this machine for a fair while by the look of it. It's three years since the last login, so that's how long since it's been powered on. I've never had any trouble with DSSI disks, so I don't think I've ever seen one fail. They're pretty robust. Okay, so that's about it for this episode. I've pulled the machine apart, blown the dust out of it, removed the nasty rechargeable battery so it doesn't leak anymore and um, powered it up again and discovered what was wrong with the SCSI card which is causing the system not to boot. Um, there's some fault on it that who knows once it's removed it, the system is fine and everything boots and my files are there from 20 years ago. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.